Welcome to Livena Marcelo's Criminology Podcast, a podcast hosted by Marcelo Aevi from the University of Lausanne, Switzerland, and Livena Powers from Ghent University, Belgium. We aim to draw a map of the state of criminology across Europe through the words of contemporary criminologists. How is criminology defined and taught? Which are the main lines of research? Which are the main schools of thought in each country? These and many other questions are answered here by fellow researchers who share their vision on the development of criminology in their countries from its beginnings to the second decade of the 21st century. If you want to know and compare the stories, stay tuned. Today we are interviewing Frieder Dünkel. Frieder Dünkel is Emeritus Professor at the University of Greifswald in Germany. Formerly, he was full professor of criminology in Greifswald for many years and there he developed a pioneer program of studies in criminology. This interview was conducted on the 17th of November 2021. So welcome, Frida Dünkel, to our podcast on, on criminology. It's a pleasure yeah. uh, to have you, former president of the European Society of Criminology, um, former director of uh, one of the only masters in criminology in, in Germany, uh, professor and all the things that you have done. And you know, uh, our goal is a little bit to, um, to tell the story of criminology in uh, in every European country, and um, so not we don't want to make the same thing as the oral history project, which is about the history of European criminology. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are links, of course, but um, mm -hmm. but you are a particularly interesting uh, criminologist because you have been uh, you are you are let's say from uh, from West Germany. And then you went to the former East Germany at the moment uh, when mm -hmm. everything was changing. And I mean, you are probably, yeah, one one of a kind eh? <laughs> for that mm -hmm. uh, for that reason. You know both words, how they work. You have been also a lot in contact mm -hmm. with the Baltic countries, uh, so mm -hmm. you have a very very specific uh, profile. Eh? And so mm -hmm. we usually start our starting question was. Uh, how is criminology defined? Uh, usually we say in your country, and mm -hmm. maybe give us your, your vision of, of criminology. Yeah, uh, this is the most difficult of your questions because uh, it is uh, uh, not so, so easy to say what, what is a definition of criminology in Germany. I mean, criminology, maybe from you can um, understand it from the persons, from the institutions who are directing um, criminological research or um, teaching criminology. And uh, historically, criminology is attached to law faculty. So the criminology in our country is very much uh, yeah, uh, close to, to law faculties and uh, to the traditional sciences where um, psychiatry, psychology, and uh, since the late uh, 60s, uh, beginning 70s, it was also sociology who was of importance. But probably in, in uh, contrast maybe to just Belgium, if you uh, agree with that, we are not so present in the education of uh, social workers, of uh, policemen or of, of uh, others in the, uh, in the criminological sciences. Um, we are more present in crime policy, in applied criminal justice research, and so I'm already a little bit in the second question you, you were raising, institutionalization of criminology in the country. We have uh, two big uh, research institutes, which are not big in the sense of the Netherlands or of Belgium. Uh, we have much less uh, criminologists in, in 
in Germany than probably in the in the Netherlands and also probably in in Belgium. I, it's it's a um, it's not that uh, yeah widespread from the persons who are doing research or teaching. There is uh, the the the. Biggest institute probably is the Criminological Research Institute in Lower Saxony and uh, Criminologisches Forschungsinstitut Niedersachsen, which is directed by Thomas Bliesener. He's a psychologist and they do, uh, they do what we would say uh, uh, basic criminological research, Grundlagenforschung. Yeah? Um, this, the, the problem is that you can do longitudinal studies only in in institutions where, where, where the personnel is, is uh, uh, in, has longer contracts and, and permanent researchers and so in universities you have the problem that we have our doctoral students for three years, five years and so a, a big um, yeah, turnover of persons you know, and this ability is somehow uh, questioned. But Lower Saxony Institute you have a, a very good team traditionally it was founded about in the early 80s and uh, the longer tradition is, is given by the Max Planck Institute for Foreign and International Penal Law, which is nowadays in the last two years renamed and this is already uh, something important for the research landscape. It is renamed in an Institute of Security Research. Uh, the, the name is something about security and police sciences so it's much more influenced by research on terrorism, on uh, security, on, uh, and, and all these questions. That there's a, a big change, and, and I'm not very, uh, uh, yeah, uh, amused about this uh, change because uh, the traditional longitudinal studies, victim surveys, or um, other longitudinal studies. Um, are not uh, in the interest of the new directors of, of uh, one of the directors is a Dutch colleague um, whom I never met and had never heard about before. And uh, they are three directors in the Max Planck Institute now, one penal lawyer, one public lawyer for in security questions or so, and then one criminologist. Uh, there is still Hans-Jörg Albrecht, who know him. Uh, he was the former chronological director, who is also doing, still doing some, yeah, I would say, traditional criminological research, evaluation of uh, certain sanctions and, and uh, uh, treatment in prisons and so on. So there is, there is, something has left of the old uh, persons doing research there, but uh, there is a change. We have then other institutions like the Kriminologische Zentralstelle in Wiesbaden, which is a state-funded uh, research unit of the federal states doing very much close applied criminological research, uh, about five to between five and seven persons, I think, CRIMZ, uh, which is a ja, Kriminologische Zentralstelle. Then we have, uh, yeah, we have some research groups in the um, uh, Bundeskriminalamt, the federal, uh, how do you say, police, uh, federal police um, uh, department. Uh, it's, it's, uh, on, the, on the federal uh, level, um, uh, they edit, for example, the, 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 the police statistics and, and, and all of these things. And victim surveys as well, probably. Yeah, 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 it's, it's right. Yeah, and um, they have, uh, then we have, um, yeah, the big institutions uh, I have uh, named already. Then we have some important um, uh, chairs of criminology and uh, all mostly combined with uh, criminology and, and, and uh, penal law. Uh, we have uh, Münster, you know, uh, Klaus Börs and his, his um, team. Uh, you know Ber Berlin, Chris Kirstin Drenkan and um, her group. She's one of my scholars, um, former uh, doctoral students. You have in Hamburg the uh, university chair of Peter Wetzels. He's also in the ESC, very well known. 
and his Dirk Ensman and and uh, who people who are also involved in the in the European source book. You have Tübingen, traditionally a, a very good institute uh, with uh, some researchers with uh, Hans Jürgen Kerner, and now it's uh, Jörg Kinzig in, in, in the, in the chair. So the and then naturally I should not forget Greifswald because uh, my successor is also doing quite a lot of empirical research. Stefan Harendorf, he is involved in the European source book also, and in in a lot of, of um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know him very well, uh, Marcelo. Uh, he's, you work with him uh, very closely together, isn't it? And um, yeah. Asking for um, the educational programs in, in, in uh, Germany, this is one of the uh, waker points of criminology in, in, in Germany because we have uh, only two, uh, yeah, I, I just found that uh, I even didn't know about it, a third program, we have, or let's say we have four master programs uh, one is the master, international master in Hamburg at the university. And then there is also the, the master of criminology in there, also in, in Hamburg, um, which is, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a one or two year, two years master. And the, the international criminology in the university is probably one year or so. Then there is the Bochum uh, in Bochum. A, a master program um, directed by Thomas Feltes and now his successors um, Tobias Singelstein, and uh, but this is a police science uh, and criminalistic uh, master. And um, Greifswald has been closed with my master program, which I founded in 2006, because uh, my successor was. Uh, of the opinion that it is too much work and indeed it was too much work i, I never know how i did it uh, because i was alone i did just did it alone with my re research staff and um and this is indeed um, a big challenge because it's not just the criminology program the master program i had but also and this is uh, the the stronger part maybe of the German situation of criminology and teaching criminology in the law faculties. You have uh, the um, chairs of uh, criminology and penal law and um, it, the German uh, law programs are, they are organized in a way that a part of two thirds of the uh, educated law education are the classic, uh, yeah, uh, uh, public law, penal law, and uh, civil law, and one third, about thirty percent of the final marks are given by the universities, who which offer um, spe a specialization, and one of the specializations is criminology. Criminology traditionally uh, um, defined or the subjects in criminology are juvenile penal law or juvenile youth law, penology, uh, prison uh, laws, and and, and uh, sanction systems, and uh, criminology in the, the, the uh, narrow sense of uh, the word. Um, so, th and these uh, four or five topics are uh, uh, together are the criminological. Uh, Schwerpunkt of the study, or I mean, uh, uh, some specialization of the law. Factor. And I did that too. We, uh, you can must imagine, we have in Germany about uh, for each uh, subject, civil law, public law, and, and other specializations, um, work law, or uh, I don't know what, and uh, mostly about six to seven. And um, and the tradition in the, I would say, in the good uh, criminological units, we have about half of the students. I had more, more than fifty percent of the students in my specialization. So the all all the other six uh, specializations were not um, asked that much. Okay, so that is about uh, how criminology is taught. In the other um, uh, faculties, psychology or sociology. We find very rarely 
the specializ specializations of, of criminology. We have some individual researchers, Lösel, for example, huh? he was, did a very good job in, in Erlangen. And, and please and I, he was before coming to the uh, Lower Saxony Institute, he was in, based in Hamburg and, uh, and other, others. Also in the field of psych psychiatric departments in Berlin, for example, they have a, done a very good uh, the crime study, which is a, a, a pedagogical study on, on the life course of uh, ex-prisoners and so on. And they do also some research on, um, how do you say, expertises, psychological, psychiatric expertises in, in penal procedures. We have, don't have a, well, we have a, some kind of a PhD program, which was developed by the Max Planck Institute in combination with, uh, I think in Switzerland, with, uh, with whom was it, Bern, yourself? Yeah, with Bern. And, um, but uh, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, sure if they continue this in, in this direction, uh, because they Kaiser, have moved away. In time of Kaiser, mm -hmm. Kaiser was in Zurich also, eh? He was, or no, yeah, yeah, you are right. He he could have been some some uh, yeah lecturing in in Zurich, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a very. Uh, I mean, the, the the history of criminology in Germany can be described also from some persons. So in the beginning of the after the Second World War, we had uh, Hans Göppinger in Tübingen. Tübingen was how do you say, a kristallisationspunkt of, of criminology. All famous criminologists came from Tübingen. Uh, Göppinger had as scholars Schoch, Kerner and Kaiser. And, uh, and there was, and, and somehow they divorced because of their scientific orientation. Göppinger was a, psych, a psychiatrist and, uh, and, and lawyer. And he was very much in the old tradition of psychiatry, medical medicine and, and, and psychology maybe, but and uh, his criminology was very traditional, I would say a, a multifactorial uh, approach, like the Glück and Glück approach. Huh? And he did, and, and Kaiser was then, um, in, he, he started in 1971 in the Max Planck Institute, and his, uh, this was the big change from the multifactorial approach to, uh, to, to introducing also the labeling perspective. Yeah, I mean, this was, was his, his big, um, yeah, uh, the advancement of, of criminology in, in Germany in the early 70s, where critical criminology was on emerging also in Bremen uh, by the people from uh, Bremen and, and other critical criminologists. Uh, that led to a divorce, let's say, as, as you mentioned. Yeah. And, yeah. And then the consequences, because you have like two criminological societies, is, is this all related? Uh, no, not so. Yeah, well, the, 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 we have this second uh, criminal, well, we have one big society in, uh, with uh, German, uh, Swiss and uh, Austrian criminologists, uh, the Kriminologische Gesellschaft. Um, uh, the second society is, is our crit some critical criminologists um, what is her name? But they are not really. Uh, we wanted to combine or to to unify them, uh, but they yes, the people from this uh, alternative uh, uh, society didn't want really, and um, but they are not really of importance. They are not in crime policy, not in, in criminology, in doing the research so much. It's the Kriminologische Journal, a, a, a journal, which is. Yeah, publishing this um, research, but uh, it is not, I would say, 99% or 95% maybe of, of criminologists are in the Kriminologische Gesellschaft, which was, um, the history was, uh, yeah, also interesting, yeah, um, I just um, had a look and it was um, Re a refoundation of uh, uh, the earlier in the 1920s, we had a Kriminalbiologische Gesellschaft, which was uh, very ah. much oriented to um, biology and uh, psychiatry and so on. And this was uh, um, closed in 1937 and then uh, refounded in 1951. 
very much oriented to psychiatry and psychology. Uh, and this was Göppinger, uh, the, the, as I told you before. And then uh, in, um, in 1988, the, the uh, second one, Deutsche Kriminologische Gesellschaft, were uh, coming to uh, be refounded in a new criminological research um, society. And in 2007, we had this, the now, nowadays, Deutsche, uh, the, the, the Kriminologische Gesellschaft, uh, which is um, uh, having as an award the Beccaria Medal, uh, which I will get next year. Uh, I should have it this year, but <laughs> I, uh, it, was, it was delayed because of uh, not being able to meet him. <laughs> so, okay. Just so, a question there for that period in the 70s. So you had, mm -hmm. for example, in Saarbrücken, Alessandro Barata teaching yeah, 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 criminology. Was. He was openly a Marxist eh? when, when you read. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. At the mm -hmm. same time, you have in Eastern Germany this Marxist uh, criminology. Eh? I. Um, mm -hmm. I have a copy of the, the book on criminology by Lexias, Harlan, yeah. Hartmann, and Lehman. Yes, I have it, it too. Yes. <laughs> it was translated to Spanish in Cuba. Yeah, <laughs> that's I great. A, I have a Spanish version. It's a oh, yes. Book. So how was, I mean, I, I mean, you have the Mar a Marxist or several Marxists in Western Germany, and then you have Marxist criminology being taught in Eastern Germany. Was there any link between them? How? No, no, no. I mean, uh, that is like uh, uh, the the left, uh, the, the the socialists or left wing people in West Germany. They hated the the the, the traditional Eastern German uh, view of Marxism and, and also the criminology. I mean, Marxist criminology in in uh, in East Germany was very traditional in, in that way that they said all evil is coming from capitalism and from the West Germany and and uh, our criminal crime is transported from West to East and all these um, uh, horrible stories and uh, you could talk I, I was talking with them uh, quite a lot in the already in the 80s before the break uh, of the wall and um, you could easily talk with them about traditional questions on family and crime the roots of crime in, in disorganized families and so. But if you were talking about the, the role of the state and, and labeling perspectives, that was ab absolutely a no-go area. You could not discuss that. The, 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 the socialist state cannot be the reason for crime. He is doing the best of his, for his uh, citizens. And uh, so uh, that, and you must also see, see I mean, in, in the whole of East Germany, there were a handful of criminologists. There was this old man, Buchholz, Erich Buchholz, who was um, the leading person of criminology in East Germany. He was more than 80 years old when the, the wall broke. Then there was Lexas and Stiller. And there was the only person who survived was uh, Günther Kreupel in, in Jena. He was a sociologist. He was somehow yeah, tolerated in the law faculty there. He had never. And there was this, uh, this other guy who went then to, to the, um, the Hague for uh, being a, a scientific uh, assistant in, in, in one of the courts there, international courts. Uh, I don't remember his name just at the moment. So, but uh, when the, the, there was uh, the, this uh, change in Germany, it was only in three universities where they taught criminology before 1990. It was in Berlin, Buchholz, and it was in Leipzig and Jena, I think. So, and, and they were all old enough to get retired and there was nothing. And their tradition, the tradition that survived somehow was the criminalistic police-oriented um, natural sciences and so if you want and uh, there is has nothing left i mean we just took over this the, the landscape i was one of the first going to east germany having a, a real a chair of criminology a department where and nothing was there before I, I, our faculty was re refounded in 1991 because uh, it was closed down, the law faculty in, in general, in life, so it was closed down in 1946 by the Russians uh, occupying uh, the, the tree. 
and the same in in many other eastern europe uh, eastern German uh, universities, Leipzig was refounded, the criminological department and Jena and uh, Dresden, there was nothing before. And uh, I mean, Hans Hirt was uh, one of the first uh, criminology professors there, only for a year or two or some, some few years, but uh, all, all criminologists came from West Germany. I have a question as well uh, regarding um, new professors uh, who were um starting to teach criminology or social sciences in general after the war uh, breakdown. One of my um, colleagues uh, and friends, <coughs> Carl Dieter Opp, was also one of the ah, yeah. uh, previous criminologists who went to Leipzig. Uh, yeah, yeah. Social science methods. Was there any contact between political science and, 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 and criminology uh, in that time? Or was there, I mean, place um, or, or, or was there a possibility for exchanging ideas because social sciences um, social science departments here in Belgium for example exchanged mm -hmm. many ideas um yeah, Kardita was a one was in a, in a in a in which fa faculty he was not in the law faculty he was probably no? in the sociology sociology has uh, unfortunately lost much of its importance they the most uh, sociology departments which are attached to deviance and behavior and so they they disappeared they, it's the, the big crisis of sociology is that it's disappearance of such traditional questions we, and, and they all sociology uh, sociology is much more uh, oriented now to to organizational questions of, of societies and, and uh, economic questions and so the famous criminologists also like Fritz Sack or uh, others uh, was were, were of, of importance in the 70s, 80s, that has just uh, disappeared. There are a few exceptions today of um, sociology departments or uh, chairs. Uh, and this is a problem also in psychology. Louis Lovis uh, says you, you can make, cannot make a career with criminology as an academic to get a professorship or a, a chair, you must do ordinary sociology, ordinary psychology, and then you can have a somehow specialization on focusing on criminological uh, themes, uh, subjects, and, um, and that is the problem today. So we have uh, also in, in psychology, we have only a handful of uh, yeah, departments um, who are somehow in the in the title have having something with uh, to do with uh, criminology uh, yeah that is uh, indeed um, one of the problems in germany that our social sciences uh, departments are not so much focusing on criminological questions but at the same time frida when you look at the attendance to the european society of criminology mm -hmm. conferences and also the membership mm -hmm. usually germany is a Top five. So you have uh, England and Wales, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, yeah. Germany, then, then the United States, and then then. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So of course Germany is a bigger country than uh, than uh, population, but um, there is there are a lot of persons. You have this uh, this um, criminological society with uh, Switzerland and Austria. What happened? There was no uh, no lobby to create studies in criminology or. Uh, or maybe, for example, the different masters that you that you mentioned. They teach in the same kind of criminologies, maybe because one cannot find the common point. I, I never understand how, um, for example, in Spain, the moment the, an association was created, some lobby was being done, and now they have uh, mm -hmm. bachelor's as an undergraduate and, and uh, graduate st studies, master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that is just... Um, we, we don't have in Germany that, that kind of career to to study criminology and then get some, what kind of posts can you have? Uh, the lawyers, they go to be judges or to be prosecutors and or lawyers. If we would have a specialization, uh, um, also these master students. Uh, in my program, I had a lot of yeah, uh, social workers, uh, psychologists, social, yeah, sociologists also, but uh, and, and other professions, but they went then to let's say, um, police organizations, federal or Bundeskriminalamt or federal uh, state, 
police departments or they went to to prisons as prison directors. It was one of my biggest successes that many of my scholars and my doctoral students are now nowadays prison directors because prison directors in Germany are lawyers. They are almost 99% are lawyers, very few psychologists maybe. Um, but the, the leading structure of or the, the, I mean, the, the, the yeah, leaders in, 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 uh, in prisons uh, are, are lawyers. Also in the, in the probation service, the, the highest positions are somehow double, yeah, social workers and lawyers uh, have done two studies maybe to, to get to become a probation officer, for, for example, you study social work and so, and we have quite a lot of, of uh, Fachhochschulen, that means a uh, kind of university uh, with a more practical orientation. Yeah, they are teaching also criminology, uh, indeed. The, the denomination of the of the, the, the chairs of, of criminology are not criminology. They are um, social work in yeah in general, and 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 so they they uh, they are working then in prisons, in the probation service, in other uh, uh, communal services. Yeah, we have uh, uh, what what I should have mentioned maybe. Uh, there are quite a lot of also of um, units, cr criminological research units in the federal states uh, called Kriminologische Dienste, which are attached to the prisons or to the prison departments of uh, federal states. Each federal state should have one. The biggest uh, and the most important is in North Rhine-Westphalia, Kriminologische Dienst, and also in quite important in Lower Saxony. Stefan Suling and uh, his colleagues uh, are also Many of the of the participants in the ESC are researchers from the Kriminologische Dienste, but they are doing state uh, research. I mean, they are attached to a, a ministry, and they they are. It's like the Kriminologische Zentralstelle. They get uh, the task of doing some subject, uh, some research, applied criminology, and and applied questions of of in in these cases of of prisons and how. Uh, treatment programs in prisons work and all these, these things and yeah and quite a, a lot of students naturally in, in the law faculties are interested are also going to the ESC who are then later doing a PhD and then be in in a, any practice of youth justice or of prisons or of, um, uh, of the court and, and prosecutorial services for example, your PhD students in Greifswald, mm -hmm. they were getting a PhD in law or in criminology? No, in law. Yeah, that's, and this is a strange thing because I have uh, had also political science uh, doctoral students or uh, from social work, but um, uh, our university, um, how would you say law or so, provides that they can be get a doctor uh, PhD in law if their contribution is somehow important for criminology or for for some specific questions of, of law education and criminology is a specialization of law and so yes so, so I had yeah I had we had also the psychology students with a doctoral a PhD in law <laughs> which is a bit strange but yeah. I have one more question yeah, about the, the teaching because I was really intrigued by the fact that you have a combination of two year master programs and one year master programs. In Belgium, we also have one year master programs in the Flemish uh, part of the country, and we have two year uh, master programs in the French speaking part of Belgium. Mm -hmm. But there, there is no bachelor. There is a bachelor in. Um, it's uh, these master programs are only master programs. <laughs> no, there is no bachelor's study in criminology. It is either you have a psychology degree or a, a law degree, sociology degree, and that is why we could justify a one-year program because you have then from the European directives uh, three plus two or four plus one. So at least it should be five years then. And um, as the law studies and uh, psychology and so on are all based on the four years, traditionally have been based on a four years program. 
Yeah, we had somehow difficulties when more and more this process of, of reform of universities was going on uh, to three plus two. So my program would not fit very much uh, to other um, to psychologists when they have a three years education, because this was one of the conditions of my program. Steph. There must be a four years basic study and anything, but then this one year program. And in Hamburg, they have a two years program. And also, I think also in, in Bochum, uh, but there, so they can take social workers, for example, social workers have traditionally a three years education and that fits to a two years program and it didn't fit to my program. So I was, I was not having many social workers, but only those who have, for what reasons ever done a four years or have done a three years plus one other master program, uh, then they could also go with me. And um, yeah, I mean, this is just a European, the result of the European reform of this, this um, the Bologna agreement. So, uh, yeah. Yes, the Bologna process. No? And that has caused some somehow uh, problems also for uh, the restructuring of, of master programs. And if uh, Stefan would have continued my program, we would have uh, to have uh, to restructure it somehow to get a one and a half years program and then uh, maybe a half a year um, abroad. Uh, this was, was my favorite idea to have a two years program of which one half uh, half year would would have been studied abroad somewhere. And uh, the basis for this is our contracts with other universities for doing for exchanging. But this was. Um, yeah. yeah, that is an important part because you you made a lot to uh, put uh, gradually in contact with the world. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The conferences that you were organizing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because you had a lot of PhD students also from Latin America. Yeah, yeah. I have. This was one of my 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 f favorite policies also to exchange uh, Erasmus students, and uh, I was in in programs uh, uh, since 1989, when I just had my habilitation, I started in Freiburg already uh, with an, uh, these Erasmus schemes at that time where um, we had these uh, summer school programs and uh, very good programs where all students from 20 universities came together for the last uh, four weeks or so. It was uh, Jose Luis de la Cuesta and Anton van Kaltenhout and uh, all these guys. Uh, Robert Carrillo and uh, we were meeting every year and in another university in the summertime and uh, having all these students examined and so it was a quite good idea and that lost was lost in the in the 2000s somehow because of the restructuring of the, the, the European programs also. It's, it's related to the Bologna reorganization because that was yeah. a huge program which is not very well known, um, yeah, because it was a it was a big program of a lot of universities, and you yeah. open also to the Balkan uh, to the Balkan countries, eh? yeah, which have their own society, which is a little bit uh, I don't know mm. the language that you that they use to communicate, but it's a little bit close for um, yeah yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we have this. Uh, how was our board member and and uh, she she from Alexandra, Alexandra Zorinina from Lithuania. Yeah, yeah, from Lithuania, but also from from I mean from from Zagreb, the the uh, woman with uh, ah, Anna Getos. Anna Getos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I did I mention Balkan? Sorry, I wanted to say Baltic. Baltic. Yeah, ah, Baltic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry okay, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Baltic. But they they have. Yeah, I, I was uh, somehow. Sometimes I was also uh, giving lectures there. It was uh, Gilinski from St. Petersburg, and, and then the Lithuanians, uh, Gintauta Sakalauskas is one of my doctoral students, and then we're Tartu. We have, have close relations to. This is one of the history of, of, of uh, Geifswald University because we have uh, founded uh, Tartu in uh, 1600 something. Greifswald was at that time quite important for the Baltic world and also Scandinavia. The relationships are traditionally very good. And um, so we had this, uh, I was several times in this these meetings, but they are only um, Baltic uh, people and Russian people. 
and uh, sometimes also from from Finland or so, but it's not so. I remember we had uh, in 2009, was it uh, the ASCBC uh, conference in, in Lithuania? Do you remember? 2011. 2011. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you are, you are a kind of a lexicon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2009 was Luvian. Um Yeah. Okay. So that that's also a very interesting. Um, yeah. I I mean, uh, the last thing I want to mention. I once discussing with Michael Tonry, he told me that for many many years, Oxford Oxford uh, criminology was. Uh, Tony bottoms and a series of mirrors, and mm -hmm. let's say that uh, what I, when I think of you, what you did in Greif for creating this program, is a little bit the same. Eh? So it was very important, but it was you uh, and a series of mirrors. You are doing everything. That's a yeah. huge amount of work to keep all these students. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed, yes. And uh, this was the wake point of it. Was that I was alone. And uh, my penal law colleagues were not very much, much interested in, in supporting me. Unfortunately, I was then going also to the, the um, being a president or a vice president of the university or vice rector of the university, challenging them a little bit, but <laughs> asking for more, <laughs> for more uh, participation in working and, and so on. Some, some professors are quite lazy, I have the impression. And so, so I did not have many friends after this rectorship in, my, in the faculty. <laughs> so, the beginning of the end of the program. Eh? <laughs> Getting the power was the worst thing you could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then we have a, a clearer idea of uh, how how yeah. things happen. And an interesting question you raise is uh, influence and policy and social policy and criminal, uh, penal policy. I was uh, dedicated to to doing political oriented uh, research, also in in the sense of evaluating mm -hmm. uh, therapy in prisons or other th sanctions, probation, and so. I got a festschrift, the Liba Amecorum, just uh, three weeks ago. It was uh, already one and a half years ago that I have had this 70th birthday. But the, the, this, the, my, my scholars or friends uh, called it criminology and criminal politic in, in the favor of uh, human dignity. And, um, and uh, indeed, this was one of my, my favorite uh, subjects to think about how to improve penal law pen, or criminal, uh, bringing evidence-based research into policy and um, so my last for example my last activity was now or is just right now we have a new government as you know we have elected a it will be a government of uh, social democrats uh, green party and uh, the liberal party and this is a very good combination for criminology and uh, and and for crime policy and so, so I wrote a paper for the, the people who were just focusing on the next five years of crime policy in penal law and penology and so on. And uh, it will be published in a few days. And uh, we send it personally to all, all parliamentary people who are involved in this uh, contract, um, making contract between the parties. So, and, and uh, there are quite a lot of stories which I could talk about where I succeeded somehow at times to yeah, improve the law, prison laws or prison or, or um, penal law. And I also was involved in the, in the Council of Europe. As you know, the European rules for juvenile offenders were based on, on uh, a draft from Dirk van Seyl Smit and Andrea Bechtold and me. So it was very much my experience on in youth imprisonment in, in Germany and the parallel discussion there on, um, on, on drafting laws for youth uh, prisons. And um, yeah, so this is a, one of my favorite ideas to have some impact by criminology on, on crime policy.
Yeah, but the, the, your work at the Council of Europe is particularly interesting because it's an impact not only in Germany, but yeah. in Europe in general. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these, um, these rules are still there, uh, and so it's, a, it's like a major, uh, like a major thing. Yeah? And uh, and you know, my one of my my doctoral students is from Chile. He is now a professor at the University of the, the, the Chile in in uh, Santiago, and he he just invited me last week for a for a lecture on first December on European rules for youth imprisonment and and uh, German experiences with. Uh, the new legislation in, the, in this area. So he is just continuing what he he, he did his PhD in uh, on youth uh, imprisonment in Chile, Peru, and uh, Bolivia, I think, or so. So there are quite uh, people. Uh, yeah, I mean that's like you. I mean you also have doctoral students in from abroad, and and they yeah. take these ideas to their countries and become professors and somehow influential in in their. Yeah, but I mean you, that that was that's a major point, and even I mean in yeah in the Americas, the, the equivalent of the Council of Europe is the Organization of American States. They could use some empirical, uh, um, you know, that empirical criminology is not the the strongest point in uh, in South America, Central America. But this is maybe this is kind of an overall question um, where we are interested in your point of view. Um, I mean, if you look at the future. What are the most important things um, to tackle for German criminology actually to uh, to move in, in, in a new direction? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. Uh, there, there are some some the, uh, important starting points for us in Germany are that uh, our constitutional court, federal constitutional court, the Bundesverfassungsgericht, has uh, in in several decisions in the last years. I would say since 2006 or so, has uh, emphasized that uh, the future development of penal law and of penal prison law and so on has been based on on uh, evidence, on evidence-based research, and so they there is a, a demand by the uh, this uh, Supreme Court of Germany, if you want. And uh, that was one of the reasons why they created these criminologische Dienste in the federal, in the ministries of, of justice. And um, there will be some yeah, pressure on the policy uh, to use criminology and to further criminology. The problem is that um, somehow uh, the, the federal states and uh, are doing the research on, on their own and they do what they want to be researched and uh, and it, there is some the challenge will be that uh, independent criminological institutes can have more uh, yeah more funding and more researchers and this is difficult in so far as uh, in in the, the law faculties the the law faculties are very often very small so you have just one criminologist maybe and I was lucky to have, for example, a permanent position for a sociologist in my department. That was the basis for, for doing empirical research because lawyers are not trained in criminology, in, in, in social sciences and, and, and statistics and so on. And that, that was, uh, and this is done also, for example, in Münster, they have also the, the same, Klaus has the same structure somehow as so people from other faculties, sociologists. and. And in, in Tübingen, they have always uh, a diversity of, of uh, professions and, and in, involved in, in their research. One of the most important funding uh, institutions is the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, the Federal uh, Research um, uh, Society. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the interesting structure is that each discipline has his own expertise um, experts who are deciding on what is important. Mm -hmm. So we have a criminology, we have uh, three or uh, about three people of uh, criminologists who are judging on, on uh, the, the uh, applications and, and yeah, so, so there's some influence of the criminologists on their own, uh, for, for their own dis discipline being responsible for 
the subjects taken uh, by uh, or funded by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. But there is certainly a lack of, of money in, 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 and of sometimes of, also of will. If you take uh, the more yeah, the research questions who are somehow critical to uh, against some actions in, in policy. Uh, so this is yeah, probably one of the most uh, crucial points in the future. To also, in, for, in, in particular for the universities, we are in a structural financial problematic situation of financial questions. And when, when you move from, so you were at the Max Planck, and you got your habilitation and you were at the Max Planck. At mm -hmm. that time, there was some teaching also with the University of Freiburg. I never understood the relationship. It's a pure research institute, and teaching in the university was not not a task of the, the researchers. I did some some teaching in, in uh, Fachhochschulen, and, and, but very minor teaching. I had not really ex was not experienced in teaching at that time. I was yeah more than 10, 12 years. I was there only doing research and uh, and that's the same i think also in 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 uh, hanover in the lower saxony institute but they yeah they do some teaching is some some uh, one course somewhere in the around hanover getting no other universities but but it's not uh, i mean this is the advantage I, uh, in the netherlands vodc or w ODC and, and all these big institutions they have. It's a very comfortable to have so many researchers doing nothing than their research. Uh, that's, that's their advantage. And the university people, they are always uh, in the double situation of teaching and, and uh, doing research, having doctoral students and so. I mean, the administrative tasks that are becoming more and more important all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this has been increasing. I mean, a lot the past 10 years, I mean, and it probably will increase, yeah, too bad. Mm -hmm. this is a, a, I think it's a universal problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then when you move, so you go from uh, southwest to northeast, you mm -hmm. probably the most distant point from Freiburg that you could find. Eh? Yeah. I was teaching there when you arrived, eh? because uh, the, the students were yeah, have been pre preparing in a completely different way, yeah? Yeah, yeah. In the first year, they, they came from very different backgrounds. Many of them were, uh, in the old time, not allowed to, to study because they were, I mean, this was highly regulated in the GDR. And uh, if you are not a son of a worker family, of an old communist family, it was difficult maybe to get a university uh, post uh, to study a university place. And um, so I had in the first years rather old students who were in the mid 20s or so, who had already a practical experience. And um, but I would say in in the at the end of the 90s already, I could not differentiate anymore who is from West and who is from East Germany because they were uh, having the same, I mean, some clothes and the same behavior. And so, <laughs> because uh, in the beginning, they, 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 particularly the young girls came uh, like to a theater. They had had their wonderful clothes uh, for for a, if you go to a wedding or so. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was the, it was a totally different situation. And in, in, in the first years. I would say just a mid until mid nineties, and then it totally changed. Uh, many of them have. I have uh, three three women who are now professors who were. Uh, I think they were from West Germany, coming in the early nineties, and they have now uh, promoted by habilitation uh, Inike Prün in Bern. Are you you must know her, Inike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her, and she is now in Bern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she did her habilitation this year. Now finished it, and had her. Will have next week her, the the big ceremony in the in the uh, cathedral of Greifswald, and <laughs> and there is Christine Morgenstern, and there is also Kirsten Drenkan, who were doctoral students. 
Ah, ah, the ceremony in, in the cathedral of, of Greifswald. Yeah, because because of COVID nineteen, uh, in in our aula we have, don't have enough uh, space. It's too small. Ah, so the, okay. the, the the cathedral is so big uh, that three hundred people easily can have distance from each other, and uh, it's unique. I have we have never had that <laughs> kind of. Normally, it's not in the cathedral. We have. <laughs> <laughs> And do you usually have that much people in the cathedral? <laughs> it never happens I mean, <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> a handful of people. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, many of your students are uh, in, um, in in interesting positions. Uh... Yes, I would say yes. I have a. I have had about uh, 52 or so or three doctoral students and uh, the major part of them are now judges, in particular youth judges, because they wanted to be it, or prison directors or prosecutors or yeah, in, in the old kind of law professions. But And some of, of them are also in ministry, in the ministries of federal level in, in Berlin. The Ministry of uh, Finances, Ministry of, of in Interior, and so on, and so they have quite a uh, it's quite a school of, of people who are. Uh, I have many contacts with them. I have uh, two, I would say, departments of alumni in uh, in ah. Berlin and in in uh, Hamburg. And when I go to Hamburg and or Berlin, where, where I have two of my daughters, then I make always an, an evening drinking with uh, my former. Students, <laughs> and we have quite a good exchange on on what they yeah what they do and uh, how they how practice is and compared to uh, law studies in guys yeah. And don't you think that that would be the way? Because I I have studied a little bit what Denis Sabo did in Canada. Eh? So he left uh, mm -hmm. Hungary, he went there alone. Eh? So he created. Mm -hmm. uh, First, the chair of criminology, and then the studies in criminology. And now you have a, a department with probably roughly there must be thirty professors, and they were twenty yeah, yeah. a few years ago. And one of the things he created was uh, an association of uh, former students. So mm -hmm. we created also one. Well, that was one of the first things I did when yeah. I. I yeah, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I was not that, that successful in <laughs> creating an association, but it is very informal. And, but, but this could be the way, because if the problem is what are they going to do later, of course, now, mm -hmm. now the master is no longer there, but it's not a bad idea, because then the ones that mm -hmm. are outside can help the new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that that yeah. is, is a, a potential way of... Um, uh, yeah. Of consolidating criminology. The more students uh, you have, uh, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. more persons can join this kind of association. But there is nothing like that, I think, in German. No, we we have a, in in the field of youth justice. We have an association, the German Association of Youth Courts and Youth. The the social workers are so uh, attached to youth prosecutors and so. And this society is about a hundred years old and was founded in the early 20th century. And this is an association of all people working together in youth justice, social workers, psychologists, prosecutors, judges, lawyers, and psychiatrists. And, and so it is an, an association not only on, on one profession. Normally you have the association for youth judges or so in, in France or in other countries. Huh? Well, we have this association. It is about one thousand something uh, members, and uh, many of my old students uh, or doctor students are members of this association. And we meet every three years for a whole Germany, and we have regional associations of this uh, association. I am the the the, the head of the Mecklenburg Western Pomeranian uh, Association for Youth Court people and uh, and so there is uh, this is one form of having this contact uh, with uh, older and younger people in the practice and also reassuring our ideas of, of what is educational approach in, in youth justice and what should it be and how does it work 
but this is uh, probably a, a German particularity because I don't see in any other country who this kind of um, multi-professional association, which is based on in the majority of social workers or educators and so on, but uh, having some impact from all professions working in this field. Yeah, but uh, indeed, yeah, Dennis Sabo is uh, would be a good example and um, how to yeah have this intergenerational uh, uh, relationship and and maybe giving your knowledge to to the younger ones. Yeah, also after they have been in practice. Huh? So it, it's funny because it seems that even nowadays uh, the new continent. It's uh, easier sometimes for some uh, for some projects. Yeah. And the the structures are not so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. One one thing that uh, Hans Jürgen Kerner mentioned was that uh, there was these conferences where they put together uh, people also from from different. I cannot remember the name. Even maybe, yeah. He mentioned some conferences where um, practitioners go. Yeah, this is the maybe this conference I, I just described of the youth youth uh, justice uh, association. Yeah, and and uh, uh, it is very much based on German language. But we had just in September uh, the the last big meeting, all online, and I organized a workshop together with uh, an international workshop, which was partly in English. Uh -huh. And we had uh, Yolande Udbeyerse from the Netherlands, for example, for the young adult question, uh, young adults in criminal justice system. And um, we had Sandra Butserius from Canada. We had uh, Lyle um, Chester from the Columbia University, the uh, Emerging Adult Project. And we had also Jonas Weber from Switzerland about uh, this uh, Swiss sanction on, on for 18 to 25 year olds. Yeah. Uh, the form of our Arbeitshaus, I think, and then we had our Arbeitstherapy, and then we had who else was there. So we had quite a lot of, uh, and the idea was to bring together people talking about the experiences with the EU directive uh, from 2016 on, on uh, uh, children's rights in criminal procedure and so on. Which have, well, there were reforms now in the last few years about uh, juvenile youth procedures and and so some basic rights, um, and um, and the other question was the problem of how to deal with young adult offenders, 18 to 21 or 18 to 25 even, and and these new developments on uh, based mainly on on. Uh, neuroscientific evidence about brain maturation and, and that it, the prolongation of the uh, oh. brain development, which is uh, causing the question actually what to do with 18 to 20 something uh, year olds uh, under juvenile criminal law and not uh, keeping them in, in general criminal law. And I've worked on that issue since 1980s, also with the Council of Europe and Many, many of the recommendations of the Council of Europe now so from 2003 and 2008 are in favor of developing a, a youth justice system based on uh, up to the age of 21 at least. Uh, yes. Because uh, they are not fully responsible because of they are uh, yeah. Yeah, not being mature enough. For, this is a they, major it, contribution of neuroscience. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I was uh, writing on that already in, in the years where just the opposite way was going on in the United States, where they have these waiver procedures, bringing children to adult courts and uh, children serving in adult prisons and so This is, uh, 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 but now the Americans are looking to Europe and to the Netherlands because the Netherlands has introduced some youth justice measures for up to 23 years old uh, young adults. And so this is uh, interesting. It's also a, a very much a uh, question of, of crime policy uh, where, where uh, new evidence. And there is good evidence from sociology, from uh, developmental psychology. And uh, I wrote about that in a, a long time ago. And now 
neuroscience coming up with this brain maturation project, Lawrence Steinberg and all these people. And now it, everybody says, ah, yeah, okay, ah, that's important. And we have to, <laughs> we have to consider this new evidence. And then <laughs> uh, in the Netherlands, it was amazing. Huh? I mean, their, their, their legal regulation is not that good because they are not using this, this opportunity. That it's not the youth judge, it's the general judge who is responsible for over 18 year olds. But um, in Germany, it's the youth courts since 1953. By the way, uh, a result of the Second World War, because our legislator, when we redrafted the Nazi uh, legislation in 1953, they were saying, okay, there, there are so many young adults who are uh, who grew up without parents because they were or without fathers, because the fathers were died, dead in, in the war. So they might have a retardation of maturity. And then they introduced this regulation, which was unique in the, the whole Europe. At that time, huh? and uh, <laughs> and nowadays, the, and then the, the, the court said, "Okay, let's think. Yeah, they are they mature enough? We have to judge it in each case." And and, uh, and in practice, most in most cases, the, the the youth courts being responsible, they want to apply their own law, not the adult criminal law, and that's the, that's a tricky question. And then that, the Dutch did not that. <laughs> There's a responsibility must be the yours, of course. But I'm coming to to talk about no, that's, uh, really, where you... that's a major explanation that you have just given. I I never thought about that. <laughs> I never heard. Uh, that. No, me neither. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, and, and that is consequence of the war. I never thought about. I think it's a very it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. This is a specific uh, German, uh, but that has uh, had much impact on the in the. In the I think also in Europe nowadays, uh, many many countries are thinking about this prolongation of, of um, development uh, of young people. Yeah, Switzerland mm -hmm. also has a specific regime for 1825, but uh, also to put a little bit more flowers, uh, we, it's not the kind of things that we do usually, but uh, you mentioned prisons, eh? and, uh, and then you mentioned that the Americans are interested in the, um, uh, in the Dutch system for minors, but also... Um, a delegation of Americans brought brought by Michael Tonry went to uh, to uh, Germany. Yeah, yeah. I was giving them some some information, and I was also with uh, with their visits. There were three visits of, of groups from uh, organized by Vera Institute and by Michael Tonry. I mean, he was with with me with us in in Mecklenburg in the prisons there, and um, and so yeah. It, it, it was amazing that uh, there was quite a, even in the New York Times, they had a publication about how the how the Germans do prisons and, and uh, human dignity is a very important yeah, guiding principle for, for organizing prisons. And this has had quite, quite an impact, I think, in, in which I never had expected in, in before. But And I got quite a lot of, of, of such visits. I remember when when the when Montenegro got independent, they 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 came to Berlin and and I organized a visit of one week to all organizations, probation services, to and so on. And I never have uh, had the the experience that the minister himself or herself in these cases, the ministers of social um, social um, affairs and of, of justice came personally and went to some organizations of probation services and educational support for, for young offenders and all. this was very interesting so yeah these these visits normally we go there and and try to to bring some some knowledge or impact and then uh, these visits are quite unuseful normally because you are there one or two days and then you disappear and, and nothing changes normally. But uh, the, the other way around is more impressive, maybe. For it's an impact that goes, uh, yeah, but nobody is a prophet in, in his own land. Of course, you of course you were also very successful in Germany, but you had a, a, a lot of impact outside of Germany. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And as you always kept a low profile, sometimes this is not seen and so... Uh, that was also a good way of, of knowing all that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you're not going to write your memoirs, I think. Yeah. If we can talk talk more, and you can write them. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, 52, 53 PhD students, it's a lot of people, eh? Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Yeah. It's an average yes. of two PhDs per year for the years that you work, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sometimes more, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, most of them were uh, empirical studies, so they were doing at least, yeah, also three years, sometimes more, five years or so, and exceptionally also ten years that also happened because they, in the meantime, they get babies or they get um, uh, having a, another edu further education in law and, or they, yeah, or they get a job and, and then have to yeah to 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 fight for the the finishing the the phd but i have i would say 95 percent or more were successful when they started and they almost nobody gave up and uh, and when they gave up it was not my fault it was because of some facts who can happen uh, problems in life as you know I mean, I think we, we went over a lot of things and even more than uh, because you were quite organized in preparing the interview. Yeah. It was really very clear to, to follow everything. So I think we talked about yeah, yeah. everything. But your, yeah, yeah, but your question was very helpful. I didn't know about what we should, uh, what kind of questions we should discuss. And certainly I have forgotten something, some things uh, we can, but if you want, we can have another talk or can, yeah, as you like. I'm, I'm ready to cooperate with you in, in naturally. <laughs> and I hope that we meet next year. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. Malaga, Malaga is such a nice place. It would be a disaster if, if Malaga would be online. I mean, this is... Uh, <laughs> oh, and the amount of work for, the, for an online conference, um, it's a lot of work <laughs> because it all yeah, depends yeah, on the secretariat and uh, a yeah, small yeah. team. Uh, so this year we were three uh, with uh, Chava, uh, Giori, and uh, a colleague from uh, from Romania, Dorial. Uh, but it was a lot of work. I admire your your power. Do you have since uh, twenty? How many? Seventeen Two. years I've been there. Since I yeah. took office in. In 2004, yeah. It's okay. amazing. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> I hope for your health that you keep such <laughs> this yeah. power and, and this uh, wonderful uh, personal atmosphere. We, 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 we were talking together. It was always so nice. And leaving it actually with you too. But but uh, I I think I, I was from uh, Lausanne. I, I attended all conferences. Your first one was when, Lieben? In Finland, uh, yeah, I attended. I, I also attended since the since the very first one, but I also enjoyed a lot the in the board. I met so many. I learned so much, you know, from uh, mm -hmm. yeah, all these yeah. uh, presidents and board members. That it's was a, nice. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a huge. Uh, it's a window huge. on the world. Yeah. Yeah. So so Thank let's talk for the next uh, months and uh, that the. Uh, Pandemic is uh, over then when we That's so the so. to meet. Yeah. Uh, all the best for you and yeah. thank you very much. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, nice Take care. Care. Yeah. yeah. So, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you for following Liven and Marcelo's Criminology Podcast. This podcast is edited by Eduardo Coco from the University of Lausanne. Our theme song is Seagull's Night, Noche de Gaviotas, composed by Gustavo Cantero, arranged by Tato Germano, and played by Tato and Gustavo with the voices of Sasha Conte and Alejandro Turco Gujot. Your host, and Lieben Pauvels from Ghent University, Belgium, and Marcelo Aedi from the University of Lausanne, Switzerland. Cheers, and see you soon.